next up, we are going to talk with two of our marine fisheries biologists from our fisheries independent monitoring program. And we're going to learn about all things marine fish in Tampa Bay. We're going to look at some common species and hear from these two experts, Kevin and Julianne. Hi, how are you guys? We're good. Hi. Thanks. Thanks for the intro, Michelle. And yes, my name is Dr. Kevin Thompson. I supervise research in the Trophodynamics Group, what we call the Gut Lab. It's part of the Fisheries Independent Monitoring Program in St. Petersburg, Florida, where we monitor marine fish throughout the state of Florida. And some subsets of those fish, we study their diets. Those diet data can really be informative about the overall health of our ecosystems throughout the state. And what we'll do is we'll show you some of those common and interesting species that we catch and study and show you how we can really learn a lot about these fish by studying just their body shapes and their mouths. And we can determine their feeding habits and habitats just by some external examinations of them. Hi, I am Julianne Knight, and I am also a biologist at FWC here in St. Petersburg at our main office. And I work in the gut lab as well, and I look under the microscope, and I look at what they eat. So I look at their stomachs every day. And um, what we're going to do here at the end is we're going to look at uh, some of our interesting fish that we have. They are a little bit different body shapes and um, different feeding strategies. Cool. Let's go visit those fish in the lab. Okay, so I'm here ready to show you guys uh, an examples of all the fish we collect in Tampa Bay. And that represent a good portion of our food chain. And we'll go from our... Primary consumers, like our vegetarians, for, to think of like that, all the way to our predators and our sport fish that we care about. Our first example uh, is a primary consumer, so something that eats a lot of algae and invertebrates, is this. It's a really popular fish in Tampa Bay that most people probably know. It's a mullet. We can tell it's not a very fast fish just because it's so wide and kind of stout. And it has this forked tail, but not very much. It's kind of a generally flat tail, so that's usually a good indicator of something that's not moving too fast. And it, for food, has this mouth that it can extend all the way out like this, like a vacuum cleaner. And what that does is it can suck up all the stuff that, basically all the mud and sand that it's swimming over, and it filters out uh, algae, detritus, worms, invertebrates that it wants to eat, and they go through this very long digestive system to help break up all that food. And they even have a gizzard, like you would see in a chicken, to help break all that stuff up and all that material. And uh, get those food resources for it to live and grow. The other bases of our food chain, fish wise, are some of the more common bait fish that most people are familiar with. This is our pinfish, not called that because it has sharp teeth, but because it has these very, very sharp spines and its dorsal fin. And that helps uh, somewhat avoid predators, even though most things in Tampa Bay have figured out ways to eat these guys. And they have, again, they're not super fast, we can tell because they have this deep body. What they like to do is they have these beak-like mouths, and again, mostly focusing on stuff they can catch on the bottom in the sand and the mud. They can extend their mouth out a little bit, but it's kind of sharp and pointy, and they really focus on like little shrimps, uh, worms, some small crabs. But they're a really important fish in Tampa Bay and really the basis for a lot of the diets of the larger fish and the sport fish we care about. One of the other more common fish that our sport fish like to eat is this. It's a mohara. Again, kind of deep body, so it stays mostly to the bottom and moves a little bit quicker than a pinfish, but still um, slow enough for a lot of fish to catch and eat them, even though they do have this forked tail. They, like pinfish, have these really sharp spines that help somewhat with predator avoidance. And they have, again, similar to the mullet and the pinfish, a mouth that they can extend and forage with, but it comes out really far. It's very effective at sucking up uh, small invertebrates that are in the sand and the mud. Uh, surfaces. So next we can start looking at some predators or secondary consumers. This fish is very common. Uh, some people, even though it's a predator, people still use them as bait, often for, say, uh, shark fishing. Uh, this is a ladyfish, and we can tell compared to the last fish we saw that it has a very different kind of way of living. It's very narrow through the body, it's very skinny from the top too, and has this really strong forked tail. This is generally indicative of fish that uh, can swim really fast. This is a schooling fish, and it has these very large eyes, which is a good indicator that it's pretty active in evenings and dusk in the dark or the very early mornings. 
And even though it's a predator, it doesn't have really many teeth at all, but it's still a very wide mouth that's really effective at chasing down um, other schooling bait fish like sardines. Now we can start getting into some fish, like some sport fish that people like to catch in Tampa Bay. So this is a black drum. It's a relative of the red drum. That called that because it can vocalize and make really loud noises using parts of its mouth and its uh, musculature and bone structure. Um, we can tell that it likes to be mostly on the bottom. Again, it has a pretty flat tail, so probably not a fast schooling fish. It has a very flat bottom or ventral surface, and its mouth is even also downturned. So it's really designed for foraging in the sand and the mud. And they're quite small and probably difficult to see, but it does have some hairs here, or barbels, that help it feel small things, invertebrates, you know, crabs, crustaceans, moving in the sand and the mud that they wouldn't otherwise be able to detect. And here we have a sport fish that most people are probably familiar with, or and certainly target. This is a uh, smaller sea trout, speckled sea trout. And this is definitely a small fish predator. It also likes crabs and crustaceans. Again, like our drum, probably not the fastest fish with this shape, this squared tail and this body shape, even though it's pretty skinny. And these are definitely predators and we can definitely tell when we look in their mouths, because even if it's pretty small, it has these really large for its size teeth that makes it incredibly effective at holding on to small fish and invertebrates. So now we have some, for the, at least in the fish community, what we call apex predators. And this is one of our most popular fish, the common snook. And we can tell, compared to say the sea trout and the other fish, that it's large bodied, it has this forked tail, not super forked, but still enough that it indicates it can be fast in short bursts. It has these large dorsal fins, really identified with this really strong dark black lateral line. But this fish is incredibly effective at what we call ram suction feeding. So it gets close to something small, like our pinfish here, and when it opens its mouth quickly, it generates a vacuum and sucks whatever in front of it in, and it gets trapped because its gill rakers don't let it get through. So if it gets close, it really fast opens up all the way like that, and that creates a vacuum, and all the food or fish that's after it gets sucked in and trapped. So this is a very effective predator because of that mouth and that feeding strategy. And lastly, one of our other fish predators in Tampa Bay is a barracuda. So what we have here is a slender body that's very narrow from the top two, this semi-forked tail. Now this fish likes to sit in the water column waiting until it sees something come by. And once it does, again, say chasing one of our bait fish, it has this large mouth that it doesn't create as much suction as a snook, but has these very, very large teeth that are very sharp. And once it gets something in there, like our sea trout, it's definitely not getting out. So those are some examples of common fish in Tampa Bay that illustrate how we have primary producers to different types of predators and sport fish to our top predator sport fish like our snook and our barracuda. So in the Gulf of Mexico, we have a lot of variety of, of fish and different shapes and sizes and teeth. So this first one is a redfin needlefish. And uh, you can see here, it has a very large mouth, a little still frozen, very needly teeth and it can open its mouth very wide, has pretty big eyes so it can hunt. And you will see these on the top of the water kind of in groups in three and four and they swim together. Uh, next two fish I'm gonna show you at the same time. Uh, a lot of people just call these puffer fish but there are two different kinds of puffer fish. This is a southern puffer and you can see it's got a little beak, almost like a bird's beak. And what they'll do is they'll scrape off the side of coral and things like that to get their food of choice. And a lot of times it's sponges, small crustaceans. But they have a really soft body, but they'll puff up just like on Nemo when you saw that and he puffed up really big, same kind of idea. But it's just deflated right now. <laughs> this is a striped burr and it also has a loose belly that it will puff up really large and it has the same kind of mouth and you can see it much better in this one so much bigger and it's like a beak and it's very hard. So another fish that's really cool, this is a cowfish and it has two horns like a cow, that's why it's called that. And it's very pretty in real life and it's very yellow and turquoise color and it has a very floppy tail so it can swim pretty quick and they'll just move that but their body is incredibly hard like a box. And if you ever get to touch one of these, it's really cool. This is a southern flounder, and everyone loves the flounder because it's super cool looking and flat. And it lives on the bottom. And you can tell that it lives on the bottom because it has a white belly and it has a dark top. 
So that helps it camouflage on the bottom and it swims very flat like this. A lot of times people don't know this really cool fact. So when the flounder is a juvenile, it has eyes on both sides of its head and swims normally. And as it develops, the eye starts to migrate over to the other side. So it will have two eyes on its head. So when it lays on the bottom, it can see all that it needs to. It also has very strong teeth. Another cool fish that lives on the bottom is, this is the Atlantic Stingray. And we still have its barb attached so you can see that. And it lives on the bottom. That also, the clue again, you see the white belly and the dark helps them camouflage. And they're very fast and they're extremely smooth and that helps them go really fast in the water. And then their mouth is on the bottom and they have crushing jaws. So they like to eat small crabs and crustaceans and hard objects that they can crush. Uh, another really small fish, this one they can get quite large. This is a lizard fish and it kind of looks like a snake. And when you open his jaw, it can grow really big. And very close up and on his tongue, you can see small teeth. So he's a pretty ferocious predator. And it's an ambush predator, so he's dark on the top, light again on the bottom, so that tells you he's on the bottom. And he'll wait for a fish to come over and then snatch him. And the last fish I have to share, this is a sheep's head. This is a beautiful fish. It almost looks like a drum like Kevin showed earlier with the black stripes, but the clear distinguishing feature here of these guys is their teeth. They have hilarious people teeth. <laughs> so he's called this most of the time because uh, it looks like a goat's teeth, so they're named sheep's head. But what they do with these teeth, you can tell they're not very sharp for eating big prey or anything. So what they do with those teeth is they will scrape off the side barnacles and things like that. And they also have a very long intestine, just like the mullet that Kevin shared with you. So they can have a long time to digest that hard outer shell of barnacles and then um, ingest the uh, delicious crustacean morsel on the inside. So this is the sheep's head. So as you can see, we have lots of variety of fish in our waters, and I hope you enjoyed this. Wow, that was really interesting. Thanks so much for showing us those different examples of marine fish in Tampa Bay. And we really appreciate your time, and we will check you next time. Bye. Great. Thanks for letting us share our research. Talk to you next Thank time. You.